Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Subramaniam Maslamani. I am a Tamil. Today, my topic is about the LLRC report. Sri Lanka calls it Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission. I call it Lamentable, Laughable and Regrettable Commission. We can also call it Lesser Learned Rajabaksa Commission and some people like to call it Learned Lackeys Remorse Commission. The Sri Lankan single is Do it so well the art of deception. The LLRC report is one of their deceptions. The LLRC report released yesterday summarize the Sri Lankan dichotomy in one simple single commission. The Sri Lankan struggle is not about race and religion. It is about the fundamental aspect to respect to morality and the universality of human nature. One community thinks of the right path and the other community thinks any path is okay as long as we get through the day. There is, there is no mention of human life, human rights and human sufferings in this report and in their minds. How can they? They are mindless people. Got it Mr. World Leader? leaders, do whatever you want to do with it. We survived the worst world war by 20 nations, 3 billion people and some of the most deadly weapons. If you got more, bring it on. Bring it on superpowers that supported the senseless Sri Lankan savages. Now Rajapaksa talks about asking for forgiveness. Amazing, isn't it? Two years ago, we were terrorists. Now we are all innocent and decent citizens. Mr. Rajapaksa, anything that suits you, anything that suits you, you mindless maniac. We don't need your apology. We are not ready to forgive. But bring back our loved ones to life. Mr. Rajabaksa, on 18th May 2009 was the turning point. No looking back. It's a new era for the Tamils. We don't need anything from you. We got a lot of work to do. Not only in Sri Lanka, but all over South Asia. Mind the Rajabaksa triumphs again in his twisted manipulation of the educated minds of Sri Lanka. He has hired seven learned people and made lackeys out of them. He does it so well that we had to question the school curriculum and add the dark side of the human mind to it so that the future generation live with care and reservation. The deepest question in my mind is, am I one of those human beings who behave so inhumanly, so unconsciously and so nastily? How can we, how can we be so bad to our own kind? How can man be so brutal? so uncaring and kill people and then the other people set out to justify the crime and then find them not guilty and set them free. It is inconceivable that we human can go so far down in evolution and be lower than the lowest of living forms. 
It's a shame. We have so many thousand so powerful and lethal weapons. Why we could not get the guts to go in and take out one tyrant out of existence and existence? And he still runs around like a Tasmanian devil. Sad indeed. It appears as though the Sri Lankan people and especially the president and his clans have been a different school have been to a different school of ethics on planet Earth. They appear to have a different set of values and yardsticks such as human life is easily disposable without any deliberations. Yet they seek approval from the rest of the moral world. Quite weird and quite unusual, isn't it? When a nation of people are confusing civil liberty with civil tranquility, they have lost their sense of direction and they are mere subjects, not citizens. That is what Rajapaksa wants. That is what the people got in Sri Lanka. If you think Tamils lost, at least they have realized it. Wait till the others find out what is in store for them. Now they are in a hallucinatory mood. Wait till the mojo runs out. Mahindra Rajavaksa himself does not know that he does not know how to lead a society. He wants to manage. But we want to, a society that he wants to manage, we want to empower. To give away power is the power of a powerful person. One remains powerful by having no power except reverence. God is invisible, yet he is powerful through reverence. The power has diffused into the greater conscience. The power has diffused into the greater conscience. You feel it when you step into the Israel. You feel it in churches, you feel it in temples, you feel it in mosques, you feel it in synagogues and sometimes you feel it in the chamber of justice and sometimes in some people. Why do people and nations waste their God-given life in, to in totally unwanted, unnecessary and undefendable act of inhumanness? Steve Jobs, the late chairman of Apple Computer Corporation said, Knowing that one day I'll be dead is the biggest motivator for me to live every moment of my life usefully and creatively. When a man has that kind of beliefs, no wonder he is going to be one of the greatest. More than that, I give credit to those who created the American Constitution mindset and mindset that promotes freedom and freedom for creativity. It is very sad indeed to see 20 million people in Sri Lanka for 60 years were led into a path of self-destruction. Each one of them could have been either a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs. Sad indeed. This LLRC was created to continue that path of self-destruction. It was created to pull wool over, our, wool over our eyes and make stupid out of the whole world and to continue their path into the dungeon. The members of the commissions did not perform their duty as told by the creator but as told by the criminal. Sad indeed. Educated and elderly people had to behave so inhumanly. But having lived a life so far, I know justice will never be denied and that is my only consolation. Man cannot be a judge, justice, justifier, fiable and justified. Seeking justice from mankind is a false sense of hope and faith. I shall leave justice to the creator. This is Tamil culture. We do not seek justice or redemption from anyone. We did not ask for an inquiry or for the LLRC. We did not set out to punish anyone. We cannot, for man cannot be his own judge, however much he may have emancipated. We accept the verdict of the Creator and we have the capacity to judge our behavior. 
and we have the capacity to correct ourselves and when something happens to us and if we cannot be our own judges we accept the verdict of the creator that is why i want to be a tamil that is why i am a tamil and that is why i am proud to be a tamil there is no other way to life there is no other culture like it if we survive the year 2009 20 nation 20 billion people army and modern weaponry we can survive any holocaust if you have any moral strength and untested new weapons bring it on savages bring it on it was a war between morality and mindlessness mindlessness it's it's not over it has just begun LLRC commission was made up of the criminals by the criminals for the criminals to whitewash their war crimes and war, war against humanity this commission was part of the grand plan formulated by the Sri Lankan government along with the other parties to the war even before the beginning of the hostilities but to believe that it was appointed as a result of the war is naivety and wrong it was part of the propaganda aspect of the war it was supposed to be a Biafra style massacre soon to be forgotten but unexpectedly something went wrong that something was the diaspora Tamil factor now they have pumpkins to bury but do not have enough rice to do so the Sri Lanka religious establishment hires criminals to run the government to drive out Tamils from Sri Lanka it was is and always will be the way till the last Tamils are either killed or driven out of the country both India and Sri Lanka share the same sentiment some foolish among my community of Tamils believe otherwise to some of us who happen to be Tamils by birth and by the language speak and the domain where we were born we were called Tamils but we are humans too like anyone else through years of living in deprived land of water soil and climate we have developed a distinct way of living this way of the culture as we call it is incompatible with the southern psyche I guess, I, I guess God has a separate plan for us and that may be the reason why we end up in nations that are very wealthy in very many ways thank you God the Almighty I do not know if he knows it or not Mahindra Rajapaksa is the prime suspect in the 2009 Sri Lankan war crimes investigations. I hope he knows it now if he didn't know it before. There are so many things he does not know such as Dominda Silva was a drug dealer and his son Namal was a high profile pimp. Sir, you can take your LLR's report and shove it right up where it belongs it is pulling wool over our eyes and send the rest of the world on wild goose chase and ridiculing the world of people mind the Rajabaksa needed some time to bury all the physical evidences in the zone of war crime and genocide under the pretext of demining while demeaning decent civil society and deceiving the diplomats LLRC report is out and as well mind the Rajabaksa has declined responsibility which is typical of criminals criminals are not going to come forth right and say we did kill people it is for the victim or the plaintiff to prove the case he treat this incident like a court case drama folks remember that in a legal case it is an external investigation outside the realm of the moral justice moral justice has little to do with courtroom drama and in courtroom courtroom as long as you are legally right 
you are innocent, free and clear. Actually speaking, the legal system favors the accused. And the accused has the right to remain silent and not to take the witness stand to favor him, for it may go against him. Whereas the moral society knows it all by feeling, hunches, etc. It's a non-verbal deliberation in the plasma of universal laws. The king may err, but the god never. So they have put out the LSRE report claiming that they did not do any harm. It is for us to prove it. But the world knows otherwise. Mind the Rajabaksa is really trying to accelerate him and his clan. He may escape man-made justice, but will he escape moral justice? People were killed indiscriminately in thousands. And by thousands, the people are still being abused physically, morally, and psychologically. And he pretends not knowing anything. Somewhere, there must be justice for all these crimes and sufferings. Who are the criminals? The fronts of the criminals are the Rajapaksas and the politicians. Who are the real criminals? One has to go deep into the psyche of the conscience. I mean the Mahavamsa. The Mahavamsa is the mission, the Mahasamdha is the fanatical outfit, and the Mahanaikas are the fanatical criminals. They are from the orders emanate. These are the real power centers, the seminal sources. The mission is to drive all Tamils out of Sri Lanka, and whatever is left will be silent, subdued, and subservient minority. Remember folks, in the Sri Lankan struggle, both India and Sri Lanka share the common agenda and common benefits. China may be an innocent victim of the grand larceny. China man is natively a man of business and needs only to be convinced that some new method is to his advantage. But the Indian Hindu, I mean the Indian, is a dreamer, remarkably lacking the business instinct and is so deeply imbued with ancient religious, ra religious, racial and social culture that it will be hard to rouse him from these fatalistic theories in which his whole nature is steeped in. The Tamils are basically people of industry, frugality and Spartanism. They are progressive people and are willing to put in their effort to live peacefully and pragmatically. They instinctively know that life is, after all, a gift endeavored, a gifted endeavor, and the minds are fitted with a cone of plenty. I mean the cornucopia. This summarizes the paradox of the Tamils. We are caught between and among tribes of fatalism. The Sri Lankan conflict was a joint venture cooked up between Indians in the north and the Sinhalese in the south against the Tamils caught in between them. This struggle has been going on for a couple of thousand years. It will go on forever, as long as we are humans with animal instinct. What we need in Asia is an Asian spring. It will, if not, we will be left behind. The Arabians say I realized it. Imagine South India being a breeding ground for menials. I cannot imagine for a moment. But then there are educated eminent people in India thinking otherwise. How can we break the backbone of the Indian fatalism? That is in their minds. I am not boasting about us the Tamils. We see the future very clearly. For we stand on the shoulders of the giants of philosophy. We are a gift to South Asia, but they think otherwise. Singaporeans think we are great people because Singaporeans are predominantly Chinese. They think with the rest of the world quite differently from the Indians. This is the background of the Sri Lankan conflict. 
for the present moment if the western powers do not intervene and bring about a mind change and a regime change in the whole region this conflict will ex explode to engulf the whole region indian pakistanis and others do not have the depth of human nature to understand the nature of conflict unfolding i am proud to say that we tamils have a road map for south asia the appointment of the LLRC Commission is a proof of the shallowness of their mind. Who in the world will appoint a tribunal to investigate their own criminal actions? Either that person is insane or intoxicated. The world knows, we know it, I know it, that the president of Sri Lanka, Mahindra Rajapaksa, his brother Gautabai Rajapaksa, the commander of the armed forces are the main and important players of the war. War against, and the war against humanity and subsequent genocide. For Mahindra Rajapaksa to appoint his own commission to investigate his action looks a little too naive on his part, isn't it? Will he, knowing that he is the one who gave the orders to kill the people, turn the gun on him? Either he thinks that the world is stupid, or he does not care, or he is extremely stupid. He got away with so many crimes, too many times. That is all to it. Will he get away this time? It's up to us. Looking at his background since 1970s, Yes, I mean 1970s. There are several strange murders and disappearances in this province of Hamadot, Sri Lanka. There is a common sense and a common sense that he was in the midst of all of it. The opposition leader Ranil Vikramasinghe and John Amrathunga are the living example of his involvement in the murders of two politicians. Recently, Lasantha Vikramatunga and Pragit Agnali Gauda murders are suspected to be his orchestrations. These are disturbing inputs. But folks, rest assured that nothing will happen in this war crime investigation for India is part of it and they will ensure that it does not proceed any further. After all, Indians have some moral values and they are going to they are not going to let down their trustworthy servant mind the Rajapaksa. It was India's war that Sri Lanka fought. How can they forget it so easily? LLRC and the Tamil perspective. LLR, LLRC for whom? For what and for why? After 60 years of racism, fanaticism, state terrorism and finally a well-planned massacre as depicted in the chronicle called Mahavamsa. They want to just whitewash, brush aside and continue the path of fanaticism. It is in their own self-interest this madness has to be stopped. The 2009 massacre is not the end of it. It became too obvious because of us diaspora times. Biafra massacre in Africa was never made into an international issue. But the Mulli Vaikal massacre was made to become an issue because we, the diaspora, took up the issue with the international community. We have stopped Mahavamsa on its tracks. Mahavamsa has been stopped. Mahavamsa has been stopped. And they can burn it now. When I mentioned the word Mahavamsa to a world-renowned human rights organization, they said they never heard of this plan of ethnic cleansing. There is no benefit to Tamils in this LLRC report. What we need is an investigation. Let me put it straight into the head of the people. We want an investigation into the role played by Mahindra Rajabaksa, Gotabai Rajabaksa and Sarath Fonseca. It is the Sri Lankan people who have to insist on it, for their future depends on reclaiming their international image. 
and we Tamils will not keep quite silent either. We will, within the laws of the land, exercise our constitutional rights to ensure justice is upheld. For Sri Lankan trouble, Sinhalese, the trouble has just begun. If you want to live the way most communities live, you have to chart a different path and choose a different breed of leaders. This ethnocentric race and religion based politics will not take you anywhere. A very simple suggestion. It took Jews 2500 years, but we had done miracles in 25 years. But this is mere beginning. If you have Mahavamsa as your roadmap, we too have our own roadmap too. Look at the Middle East and learn fast. Numbers may give false and distinct advantage, but it does not ever give absolute advantage. It may in fact be a disadvantage. In the Second World War, what the combined military of the allied forces could not do in five years, one simple device did it overnight. The biggest problem in South Asia is not in Sri Lanka, it is India. If Prabhakaran killed Rajiv Gandhi and if Mahindra Rajapaksa killed Prabhakar, why then are you holding innocent people for Rajiv Gandhi's murder? Innocent people's lives are like innocent soldiers in the front line. We see innocent people and innocent soldiers dying on the streets daily. Why are they dying? Or precisely said, whom are they dying for? What I am trying to tell my Indian friends is justice works in strange ways and in work in places dark and invisible and it crushes everyone on its way. When the Indian people are indifferent to the plight of the innocent people in the jail, they too are considered accessories to the injustice. When people do not rise, stand up and say that is wrong, those people too are punished for their inaction in that crime. But we all know one thing for sure. We Tamils have nothing to do with Rajiv Gandhi's murder. Someone took political advantage of a favorable situation. That is not for us to find out. A wife getting her husband murdered is not something new and is already recorded in the annals of history. As far as Tamils are concerned, the LLRC report is for the single is to justify their position to the world. It will never be an answer to us. We know who the culprits are and we know what to be done about it. It is not, it does not change in any way or even a wee bit our verdict and our response to it. Our immediate plan is to educate our children and create that force of moral presence so that the world will begin to listen. The spectators and the audiences are not ready. We are not ready. But we have to ready our future generations to make the spectators and the audiences pay attention. We need to educate the Indian masses so that the Sri Lankan maniacs and the Sri Lankan maniacs that there is a better formula for life. Not corruption, not bribery, not racism, not fanaticism. To make them to listen we need that critical moral mass. My appeal to the singles people in Sri Lanka is, I am willing to offer a return flight to a few people to come and see the miracle unfolding in a nation without borders and a nation of people without a government that can still maintain their character. It's in our blood, it's in our nature and it is nurtured into our generations to come. But don't be surprised if the future generation look quite different to the dark-skinned Tamils 
which your tourism industry like to portray for we may be your future tourist did you get it we may come to visit for for the best of your food and best of comforts which you serve to others with gratitude your leaders told you Tamils were into drugs and credit card frauds but when you read the patterns filed worldwide you will know what we we have been doing moral justice works in strange places in strange ways one day you will see a tower and you may wonder where it came from we know what we have to do to get it up there it was sheer hard work determination perseverance and the ever ability to rise again and again like the mythical bird phoenix we have risen when bankers and politicians begin to receive us with respect there is something miraculous and the miracle has happened just in 25 years amazing isn't it that is why the llrc report was released to appease the tamils and to get a piece of the pie and they say we are going to ask for forgiveness but we are uh, our loved ones or oh, is it a plan in disguise to continue your fanatical moral mentality will i ever let any single man into my home how can i when you have become a low low class scum basket at the commonwealth meeting why did our prime minister walk out when the scum rise to speak because we canadians are very conscious about the character of the person and the content of his character you are a pariah nation in the face of the world community they know what you do how you talk and how you have clearly told the world we are a bunch of savages without any conscience a community with conscience will never behave so erratically and to treat the world like and treat the world like garbage if you had any morality you would have behaved differently it was your culture you revealed so clearly to the world we didn't have we didn't have to do do a thing you did it yourself as i always say moral justice the mother of legal justice works quite quiet, quietly slowly patiently and ultimately it will come to haunt him the ghost the ghost of moral justice has taken over from the legal justice remember and never forget that legal justice is only a tiny portion and when that legal justice is insufficient moral justice takes over daily we wake up and the man who daily we wake up and the man who lives by moral justice get through the day like a breeze and the man who breaks that go through the the tempest my advice to my single people is please take two minutes a day to pray to god to give you a pathway to peaceful life my mother did it for me i do it for my children in the meantime my advice to our 70 million tamils worldwide is to unite stay together work hard and never ever give up and stay within your moral boundaries and then will come the victory my name is subramani maslamani a world class tamil powered by convictions commitments and conscience